Hi everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations Live on Friday night, where tonight I'm going to show you how to make a carrot tulip wreath like the one behind me. I know you might have seen other videos, but now Michael's has kind of changed up their tulips, so I thought we would just revive and refresh that for 2022. So I'd like to welcome you to my page, and if you're new here, let us know. Um, hi, I'm new, I'm from wherever you're from. Um, that way, you never know, you might make a crafting connection. Also, if you like this design and when you get all your supplies in, you want to have that handy for you to go ahead and uh, create, just go ahead and click the share button at the bottom of the page. That'll share it to your page. YouTube subscribers, a little bit different for you. Um, you will need to go, I'm trying to think, to subscribe to the top right hand corner, there's a bell, you click the subscribe, the subscribe button and um, you'll get notified whenever we drop a new video. Um, also make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything. Did I miss anything? Uh, if you're new to this page, make sure you click the like and follow button. Um, and then when you're on the video like you are now, in order to make sure you get notified when we go live, just click the three dots in the upper right hand corner that will open up another sub menu, right? Mm -hmm. And allow you to go ahead and make sure your notification for live events or live videos is on. And That's, or turn on captions. Uh, yeah, well, there's, <clears throat> I think captions, it just depends on how you have that set up. Cause I know I have a lot of people who will message me on both Facebook and YouTube and say, Hey, I can't see what you're doing because the captions are going across the bottom. And that's something that's automatic now with a lot of the live videos. So you can either turn that off or turn it on. Um, they just make sure that it's accessible for everybody um, who would like to watch a live. And I'm trying to figure out. There it goes. Um, Michelle said it seems Michael has less. Um, less tulips this year. Yeah, less inventory. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, everything, it was all upside down and then it just right sided up. So that's bizarre. So yes, um, Michael's, like I think I told you, does not offer the solid purple. Um, they just have the shades of purple. And then um, these are a little different because in the years past, it was like each pick had like two orange and one yellow. And now there are four of each in what's called the yellow and orange pick. So you get four yellow, four solid orange. So you will need a total of about 12 to 13 bunches to get the required number of tulips to make that size tulip um, wreath, which is on the door behind me. So I'm gonna make sure that's all the way over. So these are the tulips you will need and I'll show you how you're gonna break them down so that you have everything ready. What you will need, 12 to 13 bunches, just depends on how you stack them. And if you get three heads on each tulip stem, which this year seems to be more consistent than in years past, which is a good thing. Um, Michael's right now, the tulips I believe are $1.99. They normally go for $3.99. So if you're having trouble finding these at your local Michael's, go to michaels.com and order them there. Depending upon your quantity, you might qualify for free shipping. And then everything just ships to your front door. And then you don't have to worry about what's in your local Michael store or not. Yeah, Vicky said she went to two today and she couldn't get enough Harley for 13 bundles. See, isn't that? This was why every year, as soon as someone says, hey, the Michael's tulips went on mm -hmm. sale, I go Michael's online and I order all the ones I want. And then I just wait for them to show up in the mail. So it just makes it so much easier because no one's got time to do that. And then you pick through them and some of them have just been shoved in there. And so their qualities are not um, mm -hmm. what we'd expect. So you're gonna get four orange and then you're left with four yellow, which will be great because you'll have a ton of yellow left over for a yellow tulip wreath. Um, when you cut these at the very bottom, each of the tulips kind of have a little indent to keep the greenery from going way down too far. So you're gonna need to make sure that when you clip them, you're gonna have to clip them a little higher than as far as, you know, far low 
as far down as they would go. Um, and then you're gonna wanna pull all the greenery off. I see people doing the tulip wreaths and leave all their greenery on, which just looks weird because then it's not really a carrot, um, but it is a tulip wreath. That's an option you have. So strip your greenery off. You can keep that or you can toss it. I actually have so many tubs full up from the years. Um, but they do make for good filler if you need them. So I'm just gonna downsize these last two bunches. And Michelle, two, Michelle said two of three are selling well already. Nice. And she said shipping was quick for me, so it looks like she ordered from Michael's online. Michael's company. online, yeah. It just depends on what you're looking for and where are they pulling the inventory from. I think for us, I just got my last bunch of tulips in now. And um, sadly, they'll be for next year because they're the red tulips, um, which we'll use for Valentine's Day. So, okay, we're all set. So, once you have all the bunches, like I said, separate them all, pull all the greenery off. You'll need zip ties. You will need whatever color ribbon you want to make a bow with. And then you're going to need some greenery. So, the greenery is always... A challenge because you want it to look like true carrot tops which is hard because nobody sells carrot top greenery so there's a couple options you have um, Hobby Lobby sells this stuff which is kind of in a long drapey kind of greenery um, but it has quite a few picks on it this is what I use to create the greenery on top of that carrot so it's very carrot like also Amazon sells this which I like a lot better but you can't just buy it by itself you have to buy it in bundles of I think um you get two what they call rosemary this is actually rosemary artificial rosemary which is great for carrot tops and then I think you get like eucalyptus and boxwood so you get two of each but Amazon sells these which is what I'm going to be using and if I need to supplement then I'll add some of the Hobby Lobby stuff that kind of hangs. Peggy said uh, she just got a night. I don't even think you said it. How many bunches of tools do you need for? 12 or 13. 12 or 13. Yeah, it just depends. So I have all my other ones pre-cut. So there's those. So this is going to make that with no freight. All you need is zip ties. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the first one that is a very good three which means it has a really nice formed single at the bottom and then it has the two at the top. That's gonna create this very bottom piece here because you want it staggered like a pyramid if you can. It's not gonna come out perfect, but what you wanna see is a gradual like cone shape develop. You don't want it to start small and then it just kind of balloons out and looks like a funky weird carrot. Although carrots sometimes can be funky and weird. So I'm going to use this one and then I just kind of come in and I look at where I would like my other ones to be. Go ahead. So that's my one. You know that your third one has to come out here, but we also have to fill in this little gap on top. So you can't really go like this. I guess you can. I just have a tendency of using the the longer ones to make that work. So there's my two, and then I need another one out to the other side. Cause see how we have one, two, and now we're looking for a three. So that will make my three, just like that. That's the start of the cone. And then from here, you're gonna take a zip tie and you're gonna zip tie those three pieces together as close to the top or the front of your tulips as you can get. So what we're doing is we're building along the stems, just like that. And then we'll trim this off. That's weird. That has to be in here somewhere. There we go. I was like, wait a second. There we go. Okay. So that is how we are beginning. The one with the three, and then I kind of have one off to the side and then one off to this side. 
so that we have one, two, and then we're building on our three right in here, okay? It's not gonna be perfect, so don't try for like a solid one, and then a solid two, and then a solid three, and a solid four. A, it's not gonna ever get that big by the time you pull them out. What I do like is sometimes when you have your smash tulips, those are the perfect ones to kind of put on the bottom. So as you can see from here, I'm just slowly building out my cone shape. I don't want to go too fast to make it like super thick right now at the beginning. We want it to kind of be a little bit on the slope side. So I'm going to pick that one up a little bit. Just shuffle them around. Once you've got another good bundle, go ahead and zip. So you're gonna be zipping every so often. I noticed that when I did the one behind me, uh, by the time I flipped it over, just because your stems are constantly building on top of each other, you might have to go back in and just reinforce those a little bit. So there's our bundle, slowly building. So again, you're watching your shape. I almost, almost, um, created like a little paper cone to make sure that I was staying lined up with making sure that it's, you know, going to gradually slope out. You can pick up your other ones, make sure those get up. I'm gonna pull these up, put this one down. There's a nice, really good cone shape. Kind of put another zip tie in. These are six inch zip ties that I'm using. Four inches can sometimes be a bit of a challenge to work with, just because they're so small. Let me get this. I popped one of my tulip heads off, which I didn't mean to do when I was sliding my zip tie up. Let's pull you up, and push you back down. Going on a tie, what are you using for your frame? Uh, the tulips. <clears throat> the tulips themselves. Sometimes once they come off the little tulip stem, they never want to quite reseat. So what I have been doing is when they do pop off, I'll just add one small little dab of glue, and then that will make sure that that doesn't come off. Okay, slowly building. Okay, so here... I'm just following this one, so I want to make sure my bottom longer tulip is kind of coming alongside that, making it a little wider. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to pick this one up, along with this one, and I'm going to slide that in so that it doesn't get, I don't want them too, too wide too soon. Okay, another zip tie. So what it's doing is it's putting a zip tie about every inch as I'm working at the frame. So you're basically building a frame out of all the stems that you keep adding to your tulip. It's kind of like how we did the lantern swag. So there's our tulips. So it's building a really nice, good, thick, full base. Let's take this one this one and put it below. There we go. Okay, keep going. You can even take your tulips and put a slight bend in them if you want. I'm gonna kind of pick that one up so it kind of seats in there really pretty. Go to the other side. And yeah, let's see if we can get this one. Yep. And sometimes, as you start getting towards the top, you've got to also add thickness to your top up here. So I'm going to add a couple pieces up here. Build that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and zip tie that bundle. So now I'm starting to fill the middle on the top. So it's not just flat, but it's becoming more three-dimensional. Oops. How are you doing? Um, Brenda, like she just buys her size from Amazon. Yeah, they come in a, like I buy them in 
thousand, what is it, a thousand quantity, and they put them in hundred bags. So that's all it is. I'm just zip tying every couple pieces. And so now I've got to make sure that I'm filling and making it look the way I think a tulip carrot should look. Grab this one. Good as this guy you're doing it, it looks like a 3D carrot, right? These questions rounded. Yes. We hope a little bit. There's that one. Plus it says you from trying to figure out how to put it on the phone. Great. We've done this one for a little bit. Yeah. So I'm going to go out to the side. So I'm just following my curve. You said, glad all you people, all your whole family. Uh, she said, my son and I got Omicron about three weeks ago. Glad you're feeling better. She said, you have such a creative mind. Your life has helped me so much. Oh, you're so welcome. So back up. Zip tying it again. Like I said, they're literally every inch. So this is literally what you're not seeing that I am. I'm just, as I'm bringing these in, I'm just kind of laying them in like this and then just making sure that they're still matching as I continue to go out. What you should have is a 24 inch long and that's um, with your carrot, the tulip part and the greenery added on top. So it's not gonna be just 24 inches long with your tulips. Oop, there's an oddball, save that. And we'll go ahead and slide this one in. And then we'll grab one for our top. And we'll grab another one over here. Let it go. Another zip tie. I just slide them under the bundle and then just zip them down. And then it just kind of tightens everything all together. Just like that. That's kind of what our bundle looks like from the back. Looks like a weird flower, right? Good. Okay, I'm gonna put it back down. So that's what it's doing. That's all I'm doing. I'm just building to the sides. So I'm taking this one. Now it starts to get a little harder to like if I put this in, it comes in too far. I don't want it to come in, I need it to go out. So a little bit farther than that. So sometimes what you have to do is bend your wire so that it goes out where it needs to, but that we'll still be able to tie it into the main bundle here. So there's that one. Do this one here, same way. I'm gonna kinda just pick these up, make sure that my carrot looks like it's getting, it's getting a little fuller, just like that. I need one to fill in this space right here. And then I'm gonna zip it. Teresa, I guess you could, if I'm looking at your question, right? She said, hi, Kat, could you make the three that way and then put together the two sideways to start the form of a cross wreath? And maybe make it like that for a cross wreath. You could try. I have never thought about doing that. Yeah. And then you can just resort your petals so that you have, like, if you feel like there's a gap, just move some of your tulips around. Sometimes they just need to get reseeded. So, there we go. So, once you got all the tulips at Michael's when they were on sale? Well, they're, they're still on sale at Michael's. Yeah. So, I'm going to pick this one up because we're gonna go with the one to the outside. And don't make them go too wide. You don't want them any wider than 12 inches. So I have about this, I have three more inches to go on either side before I would be maxed out at the, um, the 12. Because it should be 12 inches wide at the widest part, which should be right at the top. Let's 
let's try this one. So the closer you get to the top, the more steep your angle has to be to keep your tulip shape going. Just like that. And then we'll grab this one. We're looking to go a little bit wider. So I'm gonna have to bend it a little bit more. Pick up the smaller so that it bends up. Add some to the top because it starts to get thin at the top and you don't want that to happen. So just like that, nice four. Zip it again. Oh, some of these zip ties are so hard to get them started that you like lose the grip on the bundles you had trying to get them under. So rather than do that, I'll just remove that zip tie. It's probably not going to work anyway. that one. Okay, so check size. We're got two more inches to go. So our goal is let's add at least an inch on the sides as we're going up. So you have to so you basically go from like one inch to 12 inches away. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I try as much as I possibly can because you want them to go wider as you get towards the top. And then you still got a back fill. Because as it gets wider than the space in the middle, it becomes vacant. See, still got a good solid base. Okay, let's use this one. We're gonna go out. So I'm really putting an arch on it so that this is in my stem, but I can pull that out. This is not gonna kind of fall in line with that. Let's see if we have another one, like this one. Bend that, kind of lift those up, and now we have to backfill. So there's one, two, trying to get that one in. So our carrot top, I guess, is getting thicker as well. So try to keep your zip ties about every inch. So now we're almost right at the 24. So now you can just start filling. I'm going to go a little bit, just a touch longer right there. Do the same on this side. Just a little bit wider. And now I'm going to backfill. looking to see how long we are. We've got three more. I'm going to put these right on the very ends. So I'm just going to put it here. So I'm just filling in my carrot top with these three. So that the top of our tulip is as flush as we possibly can be. So that's a really good solid base. It's really hard to make it keep like try to keep it like a perfect cone shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull. We have like this weird one right here. I'm trying to get this one. Mm -hmm. We'll leave 
that one there. Okay, just like that. So now what I have to do is I have to cut this down and even everything up. Because you didn't know how far you were going to go. So it's like there's no point in trying to even it up. Because it's the stems that are giving your tulip wreath stability. Okay. So there's our nice cute little stem. This is actually where our bow is going to go right here with my hand. But we need to add our stem. The actual stem. So I'm going to cut all these down because we can't really use the whole stick and attach it to that. It would just be way too thick. So we're gonna break all these down. And these are gonna be our carrot tops. Okay, there's that. Pull these out. Trying to get them as long as I possibly can. Even though I'm probably going to come in, I know I will end up cutting them down, but at least it gives me the length I need. There you go. Keep that. You never know. Okay. So these are not slide up stems. So I'm just going to make a nice little bundle. The nice thing though is they're wired all the way to the tip. Just like this. I'm going to measure this and see how far this is going to go. So I want to make sure that I don't have it like that seems pretty like it seems a little longer than it needs to be, but I need to make sure that I have enough stem to hold all my stems together so these don't all fall apart. So I'm gonna zip tie these, making sure I've got them all together. And then I'm gonna trim these bottoms up, make them a little bit shorter. But not too short. They're pretty old wire cutters, so they don't like to cut more than one at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, good. Nah, I'll just do them. I just had to get the really long one out of the way. Just like that. Let's see. I'm liking how that, like keeping them together like that, it's just enough for me to put my bow. So. I'm going to get a little bit longer zip tie. See, this is how the zip ties come. So you get a thousand, but they're all individually in bags. Once I open them, I just stick them in a bigger bag. Do I have longer ones? Yeah, black, but I don't want black. We'll just use white. Move those. So now I'm going to zip tie the top of my stem. I'm going to kind of push these down a little bit. Kind of maneuver that in. So we're going to have a really thick stem. Oh, Lordy. <clears throat> Sounds like I love the tulips. Is it fair? It makes a really gorgeous tulip or a carrot. So we're going to have to put these on here a couple times. You can look at so far. They're beautiful. You're amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, rain, the greens are from... These ones are from Amazon. Amazon. And they're actually rosemary. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there is our carrot tops. We won't fluff the carrot tops so we get the bow on. But now everything is all secured to our carrot top. But now we've got to put our bow on. So super simple. 
move that over and we should be pretty much right at 24 inches from top top of granary to the bottom which is exactly what this one is we're gonna do our lime green first which is from craft outlet the inch and a half of lime green solid and we're gonna do this one at eight and a half inches if you're not sure just know right where we have our like hand width here is where our bow is going to go. So you can kind of look at how far do you want to have your bow drape down. That one's pretty nice and I think it's at eight and a half inches. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do five inch loop. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Lord Stars. Oh, that's right. Um, I did do that. Did I not? No, I didn't. I think I did. No, I didn't. I just, I didn't. I was like, I know what we're doing for our fundraising for February. It is a cup of Joe for Joe, which is um, buying coffee for our servicemen and women that are serving outside the United States. Um, this way it gives them a little taste of home. So that's how your stars are contributing to that endeavor. Um, yes, I do know. Wait a second. Remember I told you it was, we made a donation to, it's called Your Not Forgotten Special Kitty Sanctuary or something like that. They basically take rescues that have a great surgical need rather than putting the animals down they try to surgically do what they can to give them a quality of life um so we and did trying to adopt them out. yeah and then if depending upon how successful the surgery is they'll look at finding them you know a forever home foster home or a permanent home so you can look that up on facebook but we did it was like i think we raised about $53 in stars, so we matched it, um, and then we did our contribution to them for uh, January. Mm -hmm. So now, February's is a cup of coffee for our servicemen, and let's hope it doesn't need to go any sooner than it needs to. So the next ribbon, I have at 8 inches, and we're doing 4.5 inch loop here so I'm just bringing it down a half inch and then this orange yellow and green plaid is from Hobby Lobby in their non seasonal section so if you watch for these colors they will go on sale every other week and they'll be 50% off and they're always a full 30 foot rule but double check never assume because the day I say oh they're all 30 foot Rolls, we find something with 20 or 25 feet. Okay. And then the last one, the orange with the polka dots from Craft Outlet as well. This one's going to be seven and a half inch tail. And we're going to be doing two sets of loop loops, one at four inches and the other at three and a half. So this gives us a four loop in here. We said seven and a half and then we're doing four and then three and a half so that the loop sizes have been coming down a half inch each time so there's four flip it around do our four I'm way off. I was like on the nine. I'm like, why is that really long? Mm -hmm. Then we're going to do two at three and a half. So I'm always going back to my ten. There's three and a half. Three and a half. And then we're out to the seven and a half. So we do the dovetail, which is bring your wired edges together. And then you're gonna cut from the folded side right to the wired point. And that gives you a really gorgeous finished look for your ribbon. 
And I did not do the orange one for the green. I was like, I have an extra pin. It'll be for this one. Okay, we are going to use a green pipe cleaner so it matches our carrot top. We're gonna pick the whole thing up. Go ahead and slide this down. And then we're gonna twist. We're not gonna use the fancy fluff board because this is such a small bow, we're just gonna hand fluff this, which is, you're gonna wanna pull all your tails down towards you, first of all, because it's gotta go to our carrot. And then we're gonna go one up, one down, one up, one down. We're gonna put these ones in the middle kind of fluff up, kind of fluff down, and then we'll put it on the carrot and actually see where we need to make some adjustments. So it's gonna go right over all of our zip ties. Right here. So it makes for a nice, nice filled bow. If you feel like some of your tails might be longer than what you'd like, you can feel free to make um, changes to those. <clears throat> Debbie Wright, we will. She said, please, please pray for our military that will be living in Ukraine. Yeah. And Louise said, yeah, thank you for your prayers. My son is leaving soon. So we'll definitely be praying. We are definitely praying for our military because, um, yeah. One more, I think. <coughs> there we go. Um, yeah. So if you haven't been watching the news, watch the news. Um, they're speculating within the next 48 hours, even while the Olympics are still going on, uh, that Russia is going to move on the Ukraine, which is sad. So we need to pray for the, the Ukraine people because NATO will not get involved now. Um, they've decided they're not going to do anything. So, kind of crazy. We're all saying God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. So, there is our bow on our carrot. And then let me show you what we're going to do the back. So, here's our bow on the back. I'm going to fold this flat. So, this is going to make a hanger. So, we're just going to um, twist our ends of our pipe cleaner around so that we have a nice hanger just below the greenery because that's what I like. I don't want to see the hanger hanging out below that, but if you look, um, you can double check to make sure, like see if you have any of your stems kind of coming out the where you might need to reinforce them a little bit. But I find that if you do it about every inch, you've created a really good sturdy base and then, um, now we can take our stems and kind of fluff them out so that they're not all just standing at the top. So each of these is wired so we can kind of give it some movement, some life, which is why I like these over the Hobby Lobby ones. But sadly, you have to buy all the other stems that come with this. Just like so. Trying to give it some movement so it's a little 3D and not all flat. <clears throat> Just like so. So I'll take this one down so you can kind of see. This one will go up in its place. And then I can fluff fluff as I feel the need. Just like so. Lorraine said, how many stems did you use? Four. Um, it's 13 total for the two ups. How many for the greenery? Just um, they're just, they came in like two bundles. So you used two bundles? Yeah. Two bundles. I'm looking. Did I cut them? Yeah. See, they only came on sticks like this. So whatever there was, I just broke them apart. So there might've been like eight individual picks. And I'm really picky about the stems because 
I've done like the spring grass and that just doesn't look like a carrot top. So you can use the rosemary that you can find on Amazon. Or like I said, if you wanna do something like I did here, all this was is a greenery like this. And so what I did, because they're really super long pieces that kind of cascade, is I kind of cut them down like, um, like in here and then down to the bottom. So I would just start making little bundles. So I started just kind of collectively taking all of these and putting these in bundles because there's no wire down here. All this is is just plastic, so it's not going to move. So if you want it to cascade like I did here, you're just gonna grab the longer pieces and you're not gonna trim them back, but you'll let those ones kind of fall to the front. So if you like this grass, this is Hobby Lobby, but it's been really decimated as you can see. Um, you can pull the little stems off, but Hobby Lobby carries that. Um, and I don't have, don't have the price tag of where it was. I want to say it's about, do you have it? Wow. About that. Nope, that's not it. It should be a little round one. Nope. Nope. Make sure. Oh, $13.99. But if you go when their floral is half off, then you get that for $6.50. And then that's a pretty good deal. So you would really only need like one of those to do two carrots. But how cute would that be on a double door to have both of them um, done? So that's all I have for you. What would you price them at? Um, I'm selling these for 60 each, which is fairly reasonable considering that you're doing, you're breaking down 13, but you're only using half of the 13. Because remember, you're half taking, the yeah, you're only using half the bundle. So you can't charge for the full bundle, even though technically you would need, if you were buying the materials to buy it, you would have to buy 13 total, even though you're only going to use half. Because remember, it's a combo pick. They come with the yellow tulips. So you'll have this many tulips left over that you can kind of integrate in a different design or maybe add to a spring wreath. So you can... Put those in other designs so all right well thank you guys for joining me don't forget come back sunday at 6 p.m pacific where we're going to do another floral design if i can find my paint <laughs> i need to make that one work all right everyone will have a great weekend and i'll talk to you soon bye everyone